Hi, today we're going to look at how to use QuantLab in Python, uh, either in the 2.7 version or the 3.7, so the new or the old. Um, we're going to look at how to install uh, the QuantLab API for Python. We're going to then look at running a small example and then uh, how to run Jupyter Notebook. So let's jump into this. Um, and you have first you need to ensure that you have the proper uh, libraries. And we're going to use the Py 37 64 bit library. Uh, we have all of them here, but we're going to use this one for a QuantLab 64. And we can see that we have the DLL, the Python DLL, uh, in this library. And it needs to go right below the QuantLab executable uh, uh, in this folder. So you have your QuantLab and you need to have this folder, uh, one below. below. Uh, okay, so now we need to, to point this out. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, there are two uh, versions of pointing uh, the library out in, in, in the system. So either we can look uh, add it uh, permanently to the environment variables, um, and we need to then add uh, the Python path. Uh, and using that keyword Python path and pointing it at the folder where we have the Python DLL, uh, the old Python uh, consoles will find this uh, DLL uh, when we start Python. If you don't want to have this uh, uh, hardwired in your uh, system, you can also uh, use uh, a dynamic uh, path that you set each time you run your Python script. So, so let's look at how, how that is done as well. Uh, so we open a Python editor, and we can we need to import uh, the sys uh, library. Uh, in order to uh, uh, set the path manually. So I'm going to copy and paste uh, that um, string into our Python uh, editor and then uh, we can uh, locally for this session uh, load uh, the place where this is run. So the only thing we need now is to import uh, the QuantLab, in the same way you would import any other library. Uh, so we're going to run a small example uh, from the Python shell. Um, and as I said, first we need to uh, import uh, the QL. QL is the short uh, version for this library. So let's import, import QL. And this will take um, a couple of seconds to load, and uh, because it not only loads all the functions, it also loads uh, the instrument library from the database. So now we can try a very small example, one of the built-in QLang functions. Uh, so let's see what we have, and we could take, for instance, uh, the v average function and it takes a vector so let's run uh, that and see that it works uh, like so so now we have run the first uh, quantlab function in Python um, by calling it uh, directly so for the next example we're going to get uh, a bit more financial so we're going to try to uh, run uh, uh, a yield curve, and I want to do this in the Jupyter Notebook because it's a bit more visually uh, attractive to, to run uh, interactively. So I've prepared uh, a notebook and with some code, and we're going to again uh, import the QL. Um, uh, we need some uh, uh, plot library, uh, we need some date time. And then uh, we take a, a date, and we could switch that to, to yesterday. Um, 
and we need a range of, of times uh, for the yield curve and we need a range uh, empty range to fill with the yields and then we have the quant lab functions QL bootstrap of the CX swap curve on our date uh, using spline interpolation and we plot the simple rate uh, from time t to uh, time t plus uh, a quarter of a year so we get three month forward rates uh, uh, in this plot and as we can see uh, if we run this we get the forge we can change uh, the interpolation and see uh, the effect of, of running this uh, using linear interpolation and then we can see the traditional linear uh, zigzag uh, shape of the forward curve and we can also run a more smooth curve fitting so instead of bootstrap we run a, a, a least squares fit we're using Levenberg Marquardt and it's the same curve and we use the Nelson Siegel model uh, to, that we fit uh, using uh, uh, a weighting scheme called PVBP everything else is exactly the same so we can see now that the shape is a bit different obviously we get smooth forward rates from the Nelson Siegel because it's a very uh, uh, smooth curve to run with uh, we can also test uh, uh, one of the other built-in uh, models the five parameter Nelson Siegel Laguerre uh, it, obviously it has a, a different shape because it has more parameters uh, to, to run with and we can see if it makes a difference if we run equal well no, not much uh, so this is how you use the built-in quantlab functions directly from uh, Python and uh, uh, we can now uh, move on to uh, the next example and for this example I want to show you how to run uh, uh, and export your own QLang code so uh, if you for some reason want to code in QLang because it has some functions that that you want to use in QLang you can run it uh, and code it in QLang uh, and we have made a library function in QLang uh, which will uh, create a volatility surface for us. I'm not going to go through this volatility surface calculation in, in so much detail but, uh, but uh, we will have uh, uh, underlying, we will have a surface, we will have a filtration of the surface with the out of the money options, uh, we will have a filter to say that we only want a minimum of three options per uh, strike or per smile uh, and then we want to plot this for a range of moneyness and a range of maturities in a fixed grid for a certain date uh, so this function now returns a matrix of numbers which will contain the volatilities for this fixed grid but we want to run this uh, obviously from Python but but before we do that we're just gonna try this function uh, out that we have made in the library so so um, uh, and and before we do that uh, we just want to also have a look at exporting uh, functions from QLang to Python and uh, we can see that by setting the option com name uh, and setting a, a different name of this function you will get this function in Python under a different name and this is important because uh, if we have overloaded functions in QLang 
uh, these will not export to Python. So then we need to give every overloaded function a unique name in uh, uh, Qlang before we export to Python, because otherwise it won't work. Um, and as you can see, uh, our function works and plots a grid of volatilities here in, in Qlang for the Ericsson uh, option surface. So, okay, so now we're ready to, to try to run this in, in, in Python. So uh, we're going to have a fresh notebook, uh, and then we need to, to get uh, the date time again, and we need to import the QL. Um, and then we need to access our newly made function that we uh, created in Qlang. So we're going to look at the interface. Let's see where there. Uh, it's called now then volsurfpy. And it's called uh, with uh, the name of the option surface um, and we need to call it for a certain date so so let's call um, this on the uh, let's use yesterday's date and then we have also uh, uh, an option to choose different frequencies of where to which quotes we take so we take the 1630 quotes and now we're ready to run this. Uh, and again, it will take a couple of seconds because we import uh, first the library and the database. And then we need to fetch the options and do the calculation as well. So it will take a couple of seconds to run. The, in the Jupyter Notebook, the import QL is only done uh, uh, once per session. So so that when once we have loaded the QL, it's, it's loaded. Uh, for, for this uh, kernel. Um, uh, we can see that we got the results that we wanted. They're identical to the ones that we had in, in QuantLab. Um, <clears throat> and now we can uh, then uh, pass uh, another uh, stock, uh, the ABB stock for instance. And uh, now we only need to do the calculation so, so it will be much faster. Uh, and and uh, we can see that it works. Uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Python. Let's see how what happens if we change the interface to this function. Um, so let us give the users the possibility to pass the vector of maturities uh, to uh, the uh, Python instead. So then we need to change the interface to our locally test function to see that it compiles. And uh, we need to put maturity there. And then we can see that it compiles. So now it's ready for Python. And now we need to re-import QL. So we will restart the kernel uh, to ensure that we get a fresh import of QL. And Doing this, the old function uh, should not work because we're missing uh, the vector of maturities uh, now in this call to the volserf pi. So if everything is correctly done, yes, as you can see, it has too few arguments to function. So we need to add our vector of maturities as we now give the user the possibility to uh, uh, set these uh, uh, maturities. So now we try to run this again and see if we have better luck. And now we can see that we get the same grid uh, as the, or the, a new grid uh, with this uh, time as a user parameter setting. So we have instantly changed the function in Qlang 
to a new interface and then just by re-importing QL uh, in Python we, we get the whole function library refreshed and can run it. We don't have to generate TLB files or anything else uh, in order to to run uh, QuantLab from Python uh, again. So uh, this was what I wanted to show you. Thank you.